Tonight we're going to talk uh, about the catching situation. I know it's second grade through fifth grade. I know there's uh, machine pitch, coach pitch, some stealing, some not stealing, but we're kind of going to talk about the whole package back here and you have to apply it appropriately. Whatever age group you're at, but we're going to give you the information anyway, and some might sink in, some might not. Um, at the age group, um, I'd encourage that try to get as many kids behind the plate as you can do uh, at uh, catching as you can. I remember coaching my kids through this age group. Everybody thought it was cool to put the gear on. Ah, they get to put the stuff on today. You know, <laughs> excellent. Try to encourage it. You never know who's going to end up where. I mean, Poppets right now are probably one of our better catchers in varsity. Could play third, could play short, pitches, could play outfield, and catches very well. So just because you know Johnny was a shortstop doesn't mean he's always going to be locked in at short. I would encourage him to get you know behind there. Um, the biggest thing that we want to talk about at the age that they're at right now is we want to try to keep the kids as safe as we can back there. There's no uh, a way to describe a foul tip. It's going to hurt, you know, and. Sometimes you have a guy catch the first time and he gets hit and that might be the last time he catches, you know, because the foul tip got him right and, and that might happen. If you're lucky to get the guy on your team who wants to catch, loves to catch, who's kind of committed to catching, keep working on him with, with the stuff that we're going to show you. Um, first thing we want to do is just catch your setup. Um, the biggest thing to do at this age is see how the kids, how we can teach the kids to physically just catch the ball, all right? Play a game with them to see how many times or how many balls throughout the game that they don't miss, all right? And it's going to be high, and as the season goes on, hopefully we, we can shrink that number. Um, we start out with just a, a, a comfortable setup. At this level, all right, we want the kids to be right behind the plate. I don't want them shading a corner in or, or a corner out, all right? Um, they're going to be right behind. Notice that Triggy's in a real comfortable position, okay? See how his feet are roughly shoulder width apart? It's not locked in stone that they have to be shoulder width apart. It's wherever they're comfortable. Notice how he points his toes out just, just a little bit. It gets him in a better squat position. Some guys might be in a little bit. Some guys might, might, might be a little wider. Everybody's different, so find out where the comfortable position is. It should be a position where they can kind of hold this relatively long, this, this position. He should be able to sit there for, for quite a while. Um, next thing we're talking about, glove positioning. Okay, very, very important. Um, we want to have a little bit of a bend in, in that elbow. We don't want him to get straight out, all right? If we get that stiff glove, you kind of lose that shock absorber right here, all right? Having that little, little bit of a bend in the glove is going to make you have what they call softer hands. You're going to be better off catching balls. You're not going to pop out as much, okay? Um, glove positioning. What we're going to do is we call, uh, uh, like we're gonna give the pitcher like a flash target. You probably all been told, give, give the pitcher a good target so that he can see it, okay? If Triggy holds his glove like this, the pitcher gets a good look at it, but we don't wanna keep our glove in that rock solid position, okay? We wanna have a little bit of movement, right? Infielders are kind of moving as, as they catch the ball. Outfielders are having a little bit of movement as they catch the ball. Catchers are, are, are the same way here. I like to teach the target point catch. Target, point, catch. And here's what I mean by that. Triggy's giving a nice target right now. If he points at the pitcher with, with his index finger, okay, that puts the glove in, in that position right there, okay? If that ball's down, he's got a quarter turn to catch anything low, okay? If he's in this position now and the throw is high, he's got a quarter turn to catch anything high, okay? He stays in this position right here, and a lot of catchers are always going to want to get that elbow out and turn it like this. If that ball's down, one of two things happen. Either he does this, which is the position that we don't want him in, all right, or he's got to do 180 degrees around to try to catch that ball. At the level they're at, not real big deal now. Pitchers might not be throwing that hard. Coaches might not be throwing that hard yet. Machine will be set accordingly. But as they progress up the ladder, guys are going to start throwing hard, and you want to keep this catching as effortlessly as you can. So again, target, point, catch. Target, point, catch. And drills that you can do with this, coaches, get, get the catch behind it. Um, probably mask, you know, is all he needs. I don't think he'd have to throw the full gear on. You get to that pitching position, and you just throw balls to him, all right? And, and you, you can even yell it out. Target, point, catch. 
and then try to throw, you know, four or five balls up and away, down, down and in, down and away, up, up and in, and just kind of watch that glove positioning. Over the course of the season that you do that, you're going to notice they're going to get a lot more comfortable with that. Questions on that so far? Excellent. All right, blocking. And again, I know second through fifth graders, but we're going to talk about it because eventually your kids are going to grow up as well. Um, last thing about glove positioning, I forgot one thing. Go ahead and get set. Throwing hand, okay? Very, 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 very important. We don't want them to hand out. We don't want them to sit down here out. Thumb inside the hand, close it, and then put it either behind his leg. Notice how he has it behind his leg. I try to get away from the old school where they told you to keep it behind your back. If you do this, it really exposes that shoulder. I mean, you point right here, it's nothing but bone sticking out right now. He puts that kind of behind his heel. Now it's a lot softer. You, know, you, you kind of let the muscle come through. And this is probably the most vulnerable area. I mean, you get hit there and it's just nasty. It just hurts. So try not to get those fingers hit. All right? Um, move on to blocking. Again, anything, questions, yell them out. Uh, the way that we try to teach blocking is, again, he's in his comfortable position. All right? You get set with a guy on base. You can't be in your comfortable position. You got to get up just a little bit so, so you have that agility. What we try to teach is we want to try to get those knees down to the ground as fast as we can. As coaches, get back up one more time, as coaches it's almost as simple as pushing his hips forward. All right. Now the good thing that we're seeing right here, notice the glove covers up the five hole. Nothing's going to get through, okay? Throwing hand is behind the glove so you keep the throwing hand protected very well right here. Big thing. The back is curved a little bit, the chest protector's down. If that ball hits anywhere here and hits his, his uh, chest protector, it, it's going to go straight down to the ground, which is where we want it. Chin and head, all the masks, all the helmets have nice throat guards on them. If you use them, if you get back here and turn your head, it exposes you know, that neck, you know, you're extremely vulnerable for that. So that's excellent form right here. Drills that we can do, all right, um, the rag balls. I think they use them at, yeah, second grade, you know, it's just a softball, soft baseball. I keep these in my bag. This is what we do our catcher's drills with. I'll get to about 50, 55, 60 feet at our level, 45, I think, at your level. Go ahead and throw balls to them. And what we want to try to do is we want to try to give them the confidence, all right? We want to try to land that ball, I mean, right about here. You might have to move home plate because obviously, you know, you, you can see the edges. If you hit the edge, balls are going to carry them all over. What we want to do is throw a short hop that lands right about there, hits them in the chest, and the ball stay in the area. If you notice, I have a little half circle drawn, you know, kind of around in front of the catcher here. The goal that we do in varsity, we try to keep the catchers. We have contests to see how many of the catchers can keep the balls within this this area. And the reason we do that, obviously, if the ball's in this area, they can hop out, potentially still throw the guy going, the guy out to, trying to go to second, or the guy trying trying to go to third. <laughs> what we don't want, go ahead and get in your position. Go ahead and get down. And show what we don't want. What we don't want is the chest to be high. Okay, and that's going to be very common. You'll probably get them to go down. And they're they're going to want to do this. Notice how he moves his head. Again, we're exposing that neck area, chin area. Okay, want to keep that turned and, and down. And the biggest thing is try to get that that uh, back bent just a little bit. And the more drills that you do with this, the more comfortable, the more confident they're going to get. I rarely use a real baseball to do this drill. I almost like hate it because you take one ball off the forearm, or, or, or you get hit one ball, and all of a sudden you're going to remember the one that stung a little bit as compared to the 50 that didn't. And what we're trying to develop here is just muscle memory. We're trying to get them to mechanically sound. And by using the rag balls, tennis balls, all right, whatever you guys got is going to really <coughs> enhance the kids up. Um, ball right action. Ball to our left, all right. We're teaching that. Go that way. Same thing. The coach is really just pushing on the hip. Notice how he gets over. He makes a turn, all right. The reason we're turning is he wants again to win a diet coke for me, all right. He wants to keep that ball. In, in, in a circle. All right. He hits hits from the chest. It's going to carry him off this way. It's going to keep everything in front. If you were to be, go ahead and get squared up. In the picture. 
if he goes straight across, if he goes straight across and doesn't square up, the ball hits, you know, it's going to roll that way. That's going to be enough for, for, for the guy to advance. So again, you want to have those catches, get that little turn. Everything is going to get sent back to home, all right? Same thing going to the right, all right? Coach standing here to get him going. You push, all right? He blocks, five hole, good turn, good, good shoulder positioning, keep everything in front. Questions on that? All right, last thing that I got um, before we move on, uh, throwing, okay? All age appropriate. What we want to try to do, the stronger their arms get, the stronger that they get physically, okay? They're gonna be able to apply some of the stuff we're talking about. We want to try to get the ball in the air as fast as possible for catching, all right? To do that, we're just gonna compact their feet. The two examples are, I try to teach this triangle that I draw on the dirt, all right? Roughly, again, shoulder width apart. My feet stay on the back part of the triangle, okay? When I go to throw, my throwing foot is going to the tip of the triangle, all right? As the kids are younger, this triangle, it could be pretty big. It probably will be pretty big, okay? So they might be here, and it might be, you know, a big step and a throw because they need to use their legs and body to get the ball down the second. As they get older, stronger, all right, that triangle should start shrinking. So we're catch, plant, and throw. Feet's gonna point, foot's gonna point straight to second. And the theory on that, when you guys go see Mr. Benson pitching, right, pitchers are throwing very hard from, from this position, right? They're in a good balanced position. They're not flying out, okay? They're in a balanced position, they plant the foot, everything comes through. Catching, if you think about it, the exact same way. We're at the tip of our, 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 our feet, our shoulder width apart. We're coming to the point of that triangle, and it's really a balance. All right? Then we come out and go ahead and throw. Um, questions on that? As the kids are younger, you're going to see them, you know, catch, jump, come out and throw. That's fine. All right? As they get older, hopefully we shrink that, and you just want to, you know, Keep working with them on that. Um, arm strength, I get asked that probably the most. How do we get stronger arms? How will we be able to throw? The biggest thing that you can do, play catch, play catch, play catch. Long toss, long toss, long toss. All right? We do it all the time um, in catches. When I was playing in Oakland, the Russo actually the block up. We had to play catch for 15 minutes as adults, as big leaguers. 15 minutes for the first probably 15 days of spring training. And of course, guys would throw for two or three minutes. Yeah, I'm good, I'm good. No, you still got, you know, 12 minutes to go. And you start out close, get long, get to the point where you're throwing and the ball hops a couple times, then you start bringing it back in. And it just, it, you'll be amazed. And that's something, you know, you can incorporate into your practice if you want. More importantly, it's something you can incorporate in at home. You know, just, just, just physically playing catch with the kids. I can't emphasize that enough. It's probably one of the most, I don't know, underused tools and easy tools that are out there. Yes? Great question. Where should catchers aim when they're throwing the second? Kind of a five minutes, got it, yep. Kind of a tool that I did, all right? I envisioned an uh, imaginary hole right above the pitcher's mouth. Okay, I envisioned that there was a loop, a circle, and if you think about it, it was easier mentally for me, all right, to sit here and throw through that hoop in front of the mound, you know, that hoop on top of the mound, as compared to trying to hit the corner of that base. I mean, if you look all the way down to second base, wow, that's a long way down there, wind's blowing in, arms a little sore today, I don't know if I can get it there. But honestly, if you think about the mound, that's 60 feet, 6 inches, and you put that circle, you know, Younger kids, the circle's probably going to be higher, that, that imaginary circle. But they're coming up, and they're trying to throw it straight over the mound through that circle. All right? And um, for me, it ended up, if I got it through the circle, I didn't even have to worry about it. The guys at second base are catching that ball somewhere in that area. And again, the older they get, the stronger they get, that circle height-wise, you know, will start coming down. Great, great question, though, by the way. Yeah. How far back should the catcher be so he doesn't nail, get nailed by the bat? Yes, I'm supposed to point that out. That's probably, yeah. 
distance from the catcher, all right, to get back. You're going to see guys this far back. I mean, honestly, you'll see him, okay? That's too far back. You don't want to be too close to either. As a general rule of thumb, a general guideline, if I'm hitting, the catcher should just about be able to touch my elbow with his glove. You guys see that? So I'm comfortable, all right, in a good stance. He should just about be able to touch my back elbow, all right? And if you think about it, what you guys just learned for, from the hitting station, right? I'm not going back to swing, right? I'm here, I take my stride, my pivot. I'm coming out here. So that bat in reality is not going to come very close at all to hitting him. But it's probably the biggest fear that the catchers have. So if they start out a little bit further back than what probably is normal, that's OK. All right? Encourage them and, hey, try to get a little closer, try to get a little closer, try to get a little closer. Some of the fields you play on, if I remember right, the holes are kind of like pre duck I mean, they, yeah, they, they, they fill them in like a sandbox, and the first catch that goes back, they're poof. And that's not bad because in general, most of the catches are going to be in a pretty good, pretty good spot back there. But yeah, great, great question by the way. Yes. Can you talk quick about a pop up and what to pop do ups. With, what to do with a mask. <laughs> all right, real quick. In general, all right. If I hit the ball, the ball's spinning this way. Okay. What's going to happen is the ball goes up to its apex and then it comes back down towards you. Okay. So what does catchers always have to do? Go ahead, Triggy. We're not going to throw it up, but get up. You have to get turned around because the ball's always going to come back towards you, okay? Even if it's over here, if you keep that half moon idea in front of you, the ball always comes back because of the spin. The hardest thing is if, turn around the other way, if he's this way, the ball's coming down at this angle, you always end up short, okay? Does that make sense? And it's like an outfielder running by, you know, chasing the ball backwards, most people are going to miss it because it's going away from you. So, what we do as a catcher, try to get him to come out, mask, now there's a couple different theories, the hockey mask kind of style that guys are wearing, the bars are closer, you can actually see pretty good. My era of catching, we had the old mask, get them off, throw them away, get it out of there. The thing with getting rid of the mask is, make sure you know where the ball is first, okay? You have to know where it is, and then get rid of the mask so that you don't end up tripping on it. Uh, tendency is as soon as it goes up, guys throw the mask off, and if the mask is laying and the ball's coming down there, they're gonna fall over. Okay, um, drills that we do, when we go outside, we haven't, obviously, you know, because of the winter, we haven't been able to go outside yet. We'll start out with pitching machines, throwing balls up. We'll hit fungos, you know, with balls up. The only way to get better at that is practice, 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 and practice, you know, the pop flies. But uh, hit as many as you can and make them run out, turn around, and come in. Again, it's easier to come in on a ball, correct? than it is to go back on a ball. So encourage them to get out in front here and go in and catch that ball. That answer it? Good with the mask and, and the whole thing? Excellent. Anything else we got? <coughs> huh? Minute uh, left. What was the question about reaching for the, do you have them pulled back? Yes. Until you get back here. Please. Real quick, we'll, we'll finish this guideline. What I try to teach is I want about a 45 degree bend in that arm, and the reason we do that, that's your shock absorber, okay? If we get this arm straight out, you're very, very rigid, and what that turns into hard hands, okay? So the thing that we try to do, encourage them to have the 45 degree bend, all right? Some tricks that we use, go ahead and grab this string with the other hand. As we're throwing bullpens, all right, and I have a catcher who's who has a tendency to be too stiff, I'll have him hold on to that string. So right when I get ready to throw the ball, obviously he's not going to catch you know, the ball hanging on to the string, but by pulling on that string, it reminds them to keep that bend in the elbow. All right? Everything should be caught kind of in this area. If we had a garbage can lid, all right, and you put that garbage can in front of us, that's where we want to do most of the catching. You don't want to be doing this, or this, or this, you be real stiff-handed. Obviously, if it's a bad pitch, yeah, you know, you're going to go get it. But what we're talking about, strikes that, you know, <coughs> balls that are strikes, those should all be kept with, with roughly 45 degree bend. If they get out there a little bit, it's all right. If they get in a little bit, that's all right. It's kind of a guideline, whatever they feel most comfortable with within that parameter. Anything else before we go? Excellent. Thanks for coming. I think you guys are heading over to Enfield.